begin with 1 to 15 July down to earth highlights. So the first thing that we need to address is the recent changes. So the, what are the present day issues? Definitely COVID is one of those. Then besides that, one of the major issues to be addressed is entry microbial resistance, which we have discussed in the previous uh, sections. And three important agendas. One is the conservation agenda, developmental agenda and environmental agenda. Recently, we have seen that there have been numerous children and adults working at electronic waste dump sites in the middle income group countries. Nearly 18 million children and adolescents have been working in the same. So that becomes again important issue of concern. The next is the drought situation in America. Food scarcity has recently arose in the regions of United States. Nearly 39% of the land is under drought, including the regions of California, Arizona, uh, Nevada, New Mexico, Colorado, Oregon. So all these regions, there has been acute shortage of crop sowing, acute shortage of fishing. So uh, those are the, again the important issues. Then in United Kingdom, we have seen that a national infrastructure bank would be established and this would focus on climate change. It would also talk about investment in projects related to clean energy. So again, major developments through the National uh, um, National Infrastructure Bank of UK. The next important is Coos. What is Coos? This is a unique beverage which is made with local millet. So uh, Bajra, Ragi are some of the local millets which are grown and these are left cooked, cooked and left overnight for fermenting. Later buttermilk is added and these millets are actually high in fiber, iron, calcium, vitamin B and therefore important source of nutrients. Now two important millets, ragi and bajra. Ragi is important because it has been mentioned in the Tamil literature, mainly the Sangam literature and uh, these grow very very easily in dry areas, semi-arid areas and therefore are available at low price. So Kuz becomes an important diet of the people even the uh, one of the cheapest food which is available here with very high nutritional value usually found abundantly during the month of mid june to mid august and this is also co considered auspicious during various religious activities and also for events like buying and selling of property weddings or any other important events in the life now again these nutrients are not just nutritional uh, as such, but when they are fermented, they further become nutritious. So leaving the cooked millet overnight, fermenting it overnight, and then using it increases the nutritional value. Now you might question how? The simple answer is the lactobacillus fermentum grows in it, and this breaks down the starch which is present in the millets into the sugar and simple amino acids. And as a result, uh, this becomes much more easy to digest. Also, it reduces the inhibitors of trypsin and amylase and therefore making the product much more easier to digest. Now, similar to Khus, uh, we have another similar product in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana and that this is known as Ambali, again prepared with the local millets, mainly the ragi flour. The next important topic that we would discuss today is alpine snow. Alpine snow is also known as watermelon snow or glacier blood. It is present due to Clementonas uh, nivalis and this has a unique pigment which gives us the pink color in the glaciers and this is known as estazanthin. Now this estazanthin pigment is important. These algae which are present in the snow uh, regions are known as the snow algae and they bloom mainly in the months of spring. So spring season is a major season where you see the pink glaciers and the pink snow. These bloom uh, basically absorb more heat and therefore increase the rate of melting of the snow. So the glacier melting rate increases because of the estazanthin which is present due to the clemendomonas. Also, most of the French Alps have seen a significant higher number of uh, uh, this pink uh, uh, content in the glaciers. Now, why? This has been seen uh, why we have witnessed a sudden increase 
in the pink glaciers or the watermelon snow as it is called as the reason is still not clear but we can say that algal bloom is one of the major reasons and uh, the growing species of algal bloom at higher altitude which was not witnessed previously is another important reason the next is biomedical waste now india is one of the countries that is generating nearly 20 percent of the total biomedical waste which is generated is from covid so there has been a significant rise in the biomedical waste recently the data which is collected by cpcb that is the central pollution control board and it is being used at the bmw app which is the biomedical waste app shows that we have generated nearly 45000 tons of covid waste in the last one year itself and the maximum capacity that a biomedical waste can reach per day is 800 tons so a significant higher amount of biomedical waste is being generated now here are the four categories as you can see the white category is used for sharp objects metals needles syringes yellow category for anatomical waste chemical and solid waste blue category for broken and discarded glasswares the vials of the um, injections so all those would go in the blue category the next is the red category where uh, plastic waste mainly the tubings the bottles the iv bottles etc are disposed now what is important it is seen that india if it vaccinates the whole of the population would generate 1.3 billion syringes needles and more than 100 million discarded glass vials which is a significantly higher proportion of biomedical waste now lakshadeep has a good treatment capacity but again at a 72 tons per day haryana is responsible for 47 percent of the biomedical waste which is generated and the guidelines say that the ppe kits or the uh, goggles etc should be disposed in the red bags but however when patients are segregated in home isolation every of the waste goes in the yellow category which is meant for incineration now this again creates a lot of problem with the segregation of biomedical waste so biomedical waste the segregation awareness among the people and how to uh, uh, segregate it at home isolation and uh, the uh, the premises the hospital premises becomes a difficult task and needs to be taken into account and addressed the next is unemployment the rural poverty has been significantly rising one of the studies of the state of working india 2021 by azim premji university bangalore shows that between march to october 2020 the rural population has jumped up by nearly 15 percent we have seen a significant people nearly 150 million people who have come down to the line of below poverty and therefore uh, again the unemployment has jumped from 6.5 percent as it was quoted to 10 percent in between march and may 2021 at the macro level if we say manrega uh, the works which are given through the manrega the guaranteed employment program by the government the 100 days minimum guarantee employment program have contracted by 26 percent so again in the manrega sector the works have been contracting so this has further created a worse scenario now the demand for the manrega workers have remained stagnant in most of the countries except in gujarat where the demand has risen up to 722 percent which is an unprecedented growth for the manrega jobs across india the next is what are the demand factors now the demand factors have been various uh, uh, amalgamation of various issues the first is the compulsion to secure a subsistence a minimum basic living standard which is required the next is the apprehension which is among the manrega workers uh, to expose themselves to the risk of infection versus getting a job and therefore uh, we have seen that only 0.15 million households could complete 100 days of minimum guaranteed employment under the Manrega. This was due to the infectivity rate, this was due to the job loss, the working losses, uh, disease and inability to work for a consistently long period. Now again, 
we have seen that poverty correlation uh, poverty reduction has negative correlation with rural employment not with the urban employment now this is again an interesting study this simply says that the state with the lower levels of unemployment for example goa himachal pradesh andhra pradesh uh, we have kerala punjab uh, have excelled in poverty reduction so that is again a very very important issue that we need to understand now kuznets was one of the very famous um, economist and he said that structural change is important specifically for developing economy that means we need to switch from primary to secondary to tertiary that means from agriculture to industries to services in order to thrive and this proved during the pandemic because we have seen that the job losses have been significant in the agricultural scenario however industrial growth has been able to cope up with the job reduction and the poverty reduction by 35% and the figures are much higher for service sector by 52% so definitely that is again a important thing that we need to understand the next important topic that we need to understand today is african swine flu asf now this is a, a less commonly heard topic but a very very important topic now during the covid times we have been focusing mainly on the covid and forgotten the uh, various perspectives and the kind of diseases which have been running in the globe now african swine fever asf as it is called as is a viral hemorrhagic disease and it infects mainly the pigs wild boars and has 100% fatality or mortality rate now what happens a person who is infected would develop fever the skin would turn purple there would be watery discharge from the eyes bloody diarrhea and ultimately death so that is how this disease progresses now this disease was initially discovered in 1909 in africa and then started to move to the regions from europe uh, from africa to europe and finally into asia from 2010 um from 1998 onwards we have seen that this disease started to have its fit into china and from china to the regions of east asia and southeast asia finally entering india through the northeast now still uh, the towns closer to mizoram the towns which have the villages which have border with bangladesh the villages which have uh, border and proximity with myanmar are the villages where the uh, african swine fever was first diagnosed now this is a viral fever as we know and uh, nearly uh, 50% of the uh, pigs in those regions have been culled now what is important to note Uh, specifically india as we said did not had any history of african swine flu so far what happened was last year in 2020 the world organization for animal health reported the first cases in india from arunachal pradesh and assam and later on for 2021 we have seen nearly whole of the northeast being affected by it now for the people of north is northeast pig is an important source not only of their diet but also for their culture the northeast state accounts for 47% of the total 9 million pig population in india so a significant population of pigs are seen in northeast and these cases have affected the uh, the livelihood in the northeast now as i said Uh, since they are a source of diet and culture they have been illegally imported from the nearby countries of bangladesh the nearby regions of uh, myanmar and therefore two important villages the mizoram's uh, lungseng village which is close to bangladesh where illegal import occurs and the next is the zoktawar uh, village so zoktawar village again in mizoram is the uh, village lying in proximity with myanmar where again the trade occurs so these two were the first areas where mizoram identified the cases of african swine flu now what is so unique about it this virus remains in the serum 
at room temperature for 18 months in refrigerated blood for 6 years in a blood at room temperature for around a month even in the feces it remained for 11 days and uh, so we can say that only with certain disinfectants this virus can go otherwise it can spread to whole of the population now if we look on to how it is spread so in uh, this diagram shows the scenario in 2005 versus 2021 where most of the countries in Europe Southeast Asia Asia South Asia and Africa have been affected by it and now it has been an ongoing spiral so 1909 it was first discovered in Africa in Kenya then in 1957 it reached Europe it has started to spread to South America in uh, 1978, 1907, it is spread to the regions of Caucasus, and 2008, it is spread further from Caucasus to the regions of Asia. 1998 was the period where we had seen a little spread that started to the regions uh, in the proximity of Europe towards Asia, and 2008, the most of the spread started. Now, China is one of the biggest importer, producer, and uh, exporter of the pork or the pig meat. Nearly total of the total meat, 35 to 40 percent is pork. So again, this forms a major market for poultry, uh, for pigs. What is the main feed? The main feed is soya bean. Now, soya bean, because of the huge culling that was seen in the regions of China, the soya bean imports in China declined. A lot of soya bean used to be imported from America. And in India, even we have seen that the prices of soya bean have doubled from rupees 35 last year to nearly rupees 68 this year so a significant jump in the price of soya bean which is a feed for the pigs now the demand for the soya bean has declined because of a huge large scale culling in india we say nearly 70 percent of the pig farms are with the small farmers now those Pig farms, which are with the small farmers, are worst affected because whenever there is a pandemic or an epidemic that occurs, these farmers are unable to save and need to have a large scale culling. However, those working with large scale farms or factory production are able to survive better. So, same was the case with China versus US this year. So, China 98% of the population who was involved with pig rearing was small farms with less than 100 pigs and suffered badly because of the uh, African swine fever and this led to nearly 50% culling of the total pig population in China. Now, in contrast to this, in America there are factory farms and therefore the rate was much more matched. In China, we have seen that the rate for the uh, the price index for the feed, which is the soya bean, jumped significantly, but the price for the pork could not jump significantly and therefore there was a huge loss or a gap that was seen. But in United States, they were able to maintain this gap because of the factory farming. So what Vietnam did recently was to shift to a factory model. Vietnam also was one of the nations which was worst hit because of this disease and it shifted from the small scale model to the large factory farms and the similar efforts have been done in China recently. So China now is planning to convert all its small pig farms to large pig farms and that is by a mission of 2025. So uh, that is because it witnessed 25% dip in the global uh, production which was supplied by that. So the price of the live pig is four times higher in China as of now as compared to US. So to make their economies much more competitive, much more uh, viable, they need to have an alternate method. And because of the significant shortage of the pork in China, China has recently been importing it from European Union. Germany is one of the nations which has been supplying it. Now Germany is fencing its border with Poland now. The reason being the movement of wild boars which is commonly seen between Poland and Germany. Now if that movement does not stop, there can be a high risk to the German wild boars because of the African swine fever. So again that needs to be uh, checked. So those are some of the important efforts that have been done in this aspect in order to check the production. Now as we said culling is viable only for factory farming but if it is a private farm then it becomes 
difficult if it is a small farm it becomes difficult and moreover unviable and the cost becomes much more higher the next important topic that we need to discuss is halari donkey now halari donkeys are unique these donkeys are native to the saurashtra area of gujarat and they are reared by the bharwad community now bharwad community is a unique community which is located in this region no, known for pig uh, the sheep wool and goat mill those are the two main activities now halari donkey is again considered very very important New, numerous medicinal value is related to halari donkey but uh, there has been no regular market for the milk of halari donkey the cost is nearly 2000 to 7000 per liter which is very very higher and therefore not viable so there has been a significant decline in the people who are actually taming and rearing the halari donkeys now the bharwad community are known for their interesting livelihood patterns they have their own unique lifestyle they usually drink tea in banyan leaves cups and therefore they uh, have their dinner with roti and goat milk those are the common diet uh, method that is seen and recently the vilayati babul or what is known as the prosopis uh, julifera has grown significantly in the region of saurash this has reduced the feed for the halari donkeys as well and therefore the people taming them have uh, them have significantly declined and now there are less than 600 of these donkeys which are left in the region of Saurash. So again there have been conservation efforts which are required for the same. The next is the mRNA vaccine technology transfer. Now what has been important? We have been talking so much about vaccination, vaccination within the countries around the globe but there have been different technologies which have been adopted for it. Some of those are attenuated viruses, some of those as we are based on mRNA vaccine techniques. So two important companies Pfizer and Moderna have been working with mRNA techniques. Now the idea is in order for the fact that we need to vaccinate the whole of the population the technology transfer is important. So what needs to be transferred? The intellectual property, the know-how and the technology how it works. So all these needs to be transferred and this has been in line with the COVAX. What is COVAX? COVAX is a group co uh, company of Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Index and UNICEF. So together they are working to provide uh, the right and the uh, possibility of having vaccination for everyone. So access of vaccination to most of the masses has been uh, made possible through this and therefore we are talking about technology transfer and in South Africa there has been uh, an idea where mRNA based technology virus transfer sorry technology transfer vaccine transfer would be done and there would be more vaccine production which would be enhanced. Thank you.